from Elm Creek, Nebraska. It's the Sports Hub. That thing's loud. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Sports Hub Tailgate on CarneyHub.com. Again, I'm your host, Cody Riedel, alongside Hub Sports writer Jason Ahrens. Jason, God bless small town America. Am God I right? God bless small town America and Friday nights in yes. those small towns. Yes. Because they usually provide a lot of excitement on the football field. Well, let's get hop right into that excitement. Last week, you covered Carney Catholic. Give us your thoughts. I did. Uh, domination. Let's just leave it at that. Carney Catholic, you know, just took it to Ogallala in, in every way possible. Thomas Connolly, 96 yards rushing in the first quarter. Finished with 136 for the game. Brett James had a punt return for a touchdown. Connor Streit had a pick six. Uh, the defense as a whole uh, had two sacks on the first possession of Ogallala, and they held the Indians to 22 yards of total offense and no first downs in the first half. So it ended up being a 50-9 to nine, uh, finish, but no troubles at all for Kearney Catholic. Moving forward, they've got Central City this coming week. They're just they're rolling along. Yeah, they're looking, looking really good. Um, some of the other games that you uh, feel are worth mentioning here on the show today. Uh, yeah, we'll stick in Kearney. We'll go Kearney high. Uh, a, a valiant effort at Miller North on last Thursday night. From what I've gathered, uh, they gave a heck of an effort. Obviously, they had trouble with Isaac Ackery, the Mustang quarterback. 271 yards rushing, five touchdowns. But still, just a 10-point loss to Class A's number one team. A good effort overall is basically what I heard. I mean, what'd you hear about the ball game? You know, I'm. I mean, I was. I was very pleased with the score. Obviously, I didn't go with the upset this week in our picks like I did the week before. But um, they have to be pleased with with their performance and just having that kind of non district schedule going into districts. It. it can't do anything but help them. So right, absolutely. It's not like this one. It's not college football. One loss isn't going to make yep. or break. You know, there's a lot of learning lessons to take from this ball game that they're going to be able to see on film. And now they know what level they have to be at if they want to, you know, eventually compete and hopefully get to Lincoln down the road. Yep. So, <clears throat> um, one other game, the Broncos of Amherst. Yeah, uh, the Am they're the New York Football Giants. It seems like they want to come back and win every game late. It's how it goes for them. Trailing two Eustis Farnham, 16-0. Uh, they came back to get the 24-16 victory. Uh, Devin Dibbern, a pair of touchdown runs, a touchdown pass from Cale Preble to Mason Klingelhofer sealed the victory for Amherst in that ball game. And they're 3-0 for the first time in seven years. Uh, they're, I believe they're ranked number seven currently in the state. Uh, but now, you know, it hasn't been the toughest schedule, but we're going to find out a lot more about them upcoming here. They've got a uh, much improved Wilcox Hildreth Ball Club coming up, and then they've got two of the top teams in D2 after that in Shelton and Kennesaw. So the schedule is about to get a lot tougher for Amherst. We are, we're going to see what exactly they are made of down the road here. We'll see if those Broncos uh, keep bucking their way through the schedule that, pretty soon. That we will. All right. Well, a lot of great games. There had to have been some great performances. Yeah. Props go to a ton of them. We got a ton of props to give out here today because I had a hard time slimming it down. We got a trio of running backs along Highway 30 there. That includes Kozads, Jacob Paulson, Gibbons, Eli Van Meter, and Shelton's Luke Glenn. The three of them combined for nearly 700 yards rushing and 13 touchdowns, and all three teams won in a route. I mean, those guys are, have proven to be unstoppable so far, it seems like. That's a lot of ground to cover. That is a lot of ground to cover. <laughs> and also, I've got a trio of running back, or excuse me, a trio of quarterbacks. We start with Britton Ferguson of the Elm Creek Buffaloes. He had 160 yards rushing and a touchdown to go along with three passing touchdowns. Also, you've got Loop City's Austin Bocart. Four passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, and a pick six. So he totaled three, six touchdowns for the Red Raiders in a big victory. And finally, you've got Cohen Marks of Franklin, who had 224 yards passing, I believe, and just shy of 100 yards on the ground, and he totaled five touchdowns. So offense all over the place in the Hub territory. So props to all those guys in, in a fantastic week. That, that's a lot of digits you just threw out at us. <laughs> so I hope everyone got that because that was impressive. Oh, I think. Good job to those area athletes and the numbers that they produced last week in week three. Moving on to week four. What games are you looking at, Jason? A couple of them. Once again, well, since we're in Elm Creek, we might as well stick here. Yep. And not just because we're here, because this is an important game coming up. The D1-9 district is kind of coming down to a three-way race between Elm Creek, Arapahoe, and Overton. 
They're, I mean, they're all going to match up. They haven't done that yet, but this coming week, Elm Creek is traveling to Arapahoe. Both teams have been very efficient so far this year. They're getting some big victories. So, you know, this is time to, you know, this is a make or break game kind of early in the season. You know, one of your high profile matchups as far as districts are concerned. You know, whoever wins this game can kind of get ahead up in the step towards winning the districts. I guarantee you all three of those teams have, you know, they want to win the district title, no bones about it. Uh, another game is Kearney High taking on Grand Island. The rivalry. The rivalry. Tell what about what, what about this game intrigues us, Cody? Well, I mean, Grand Island got the upper hand for the first time uh, in their last previous ten games. Carney High had been the victor, but last year with uh, Riker Fife, uh, who's now a walk-on at Nebraska, comes in, gets the Islanders their first victory in the past ten games. And, you know, it doesn't matter what the record is usually with these two teams. Um, it's going to be a good game regardless. So, Carney High coming in off a tough loss uh, to Miller North, Grand Island, one and three. Um, kind of lost a lot of talent off of last year's team, but, mm -hmm. I mean, it should. it's usually a pretty good game uh, just with the rivalry that's there. So, do you have any other thoughts about it? Yeah, not, you know, I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's going to be probably a good game. That's why we got to mention that on this show. That's right. Carney's going to be favored, but like you said, when these two teams play, it might as well be 0-0 zero and zero against 0-0 zero and zero yep. type of deal. So uh, a couple other games I'm looking at. It's uh, uh, kind of prove-it games for a couple of ball teams. I already mentioned Amherst taking on an improved Wilcox-Hildreth team, and then they've got a tough schedule down the road ahead of that. Uh, but also you've got Gibbon against an extremely tough Adams Central team. You know, both teams are 3-0, and but Gibbons' victories have come over a combined record of 1-10. So, Adams Central favored in this ball game to win it, but, you know, I'm really curious to see how well Gibbon is able to stay in this ball game. And I'm not saying the Buffaloes can't win it, but, you know, this is going to real, you know, obviously be a real test for them and a you know, real measuring stick for them as a team to see where they stand. Moving on out of the high school ranks over to the Division II college athletics, the Lopers uh, football squad. It's kind of a rough go so far this season. Yeah, the Griffins took it to them down there in Missouri over the weekend. Uh, a lot of injuries, and of course the main concern at this point in time is quarterbacking issue. Uh, the Griffins won 38-14, um, but the biggest news here is both Eric Kaiser and Tyler D. Mora go down with shoulder injuries in the ball game. They've already lost uh, Kevin Romero to a knee injury. So you had Flanagan in there taking snaps at quarterback towards the end of the game. He actually threw a touchdown pass. But, you know, that's kind of besides the point because obviously as good as an athlete he, as he is at running back wide receiver where he's going to play, he's probably not going to be as effective as quarterback here. He just hasn't, hasn't had the opportunity or the snaps that any of those other three guys have gotten. Mm -hmm. I've heard there's an outside chance that Diamora could be healthy enough to go this homecoming ball game against Northwest Missouri State, but that's still to be determined. All righty. Well, I think that should do it for us today, Jason. Sounds um, good. We got to go back over to our truck. Didn't get to tailgate. Uh, didn't want to ruin the nice lush grass here at Elm Creek. I don't think they would appreciate it as pulling out onto the uh, field. Yeah. So. But uh, find out where we are next week um, on carneyhub.com slash sports hub. Make sure you grab your Carney Hub print edition for the latest sports headlines. Read what this guy is writing about. And, um, yeah, check carneyhub.com for any breaking news as well. So uh, until next week, uh, we'll catch you later. Cozad's. Jacob Paulson. Jacob Paulson, thank you very much. Yep. He had, well, I, I, they're comp <laughs> <laughs> Parents, Jason's number is 308 <laughs> <laughs>Golf USA is your one-stop golf shop in Kearney and Grand Island. Specializing in golf supplies, full repair services, and custom club fittings to meet the needs of golfers young and old. Golf USA, your internationally known, locally owned golf store in Kearney and Grand Island.